Okay. Light meter. Someone's gonna out there who's gonna roll their eyes. You know one thing I've never seen any of the top twenty, and by that I mean people pimping gear. Uh, photography channels on YouTube they never mention. A couple of them have even put it down, calling it like throwback. Their exact words: throwback technology. Guess who said that one? Um, <laughs> um, there is poking around in the dark like a blind squirrel who will eventually find an acorn. You know what looks really unprofessional? Is that if uh, some uh, rich person pays you to, just for example, come out to their house and uh, do a shoot, and you set up a really nice studio strobe. It's like, yeah, you know, you drop 500 bucks on that studio strobe. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, they got all dressed up, or, you know, you maybe you paid a hairdresser, makeup artist to come in and do their stuff. And uh, they see you got the ex fancy, expensive camera lens and the fancy umbrella or octobox. And uh, you take a shot, you chimp on the back of your camera, you uh, fiddle a little bit with your uh, lighting output, and then you take another shot and then chimp on the back of your camera. I, I can't even tell you how disheartening that is. Not only have you lost trust with the client, you've made yourself look like an ass, which you are. You've wasted time. You have all this expensive gear, and you haven't followed the most simple rule, which is not part of the camera, is uh, ARC, Absolute Repeatable Consistency. Um, every pro athlete in the world, everyone, swimming, golfing, whatever the hell it is, uh, I used to give shooting lessons. I also uh, used to give archery lessons. I was really good at it, too. And uh, one thing all those people have in common is ARC, Absolute Repeatable Consistency. Um, people that are uh, master archers, they have a divot right here in their face where they actually draw their string to each and every time. They actually have location points. They'll actually intuitively, muscle memory. I see people when, yeah, it's like, oh, I've been shooting for 20 years. It's like, well, let's see how you shoot four or five shots. Okay, first shot's like this, second shot's like this. Okay, found the problem. You're supposed to be concentrating on the photography not the variables. Now, do you need a light meter and a color checker passport for doing street photography? No. If you want to go out and pop off a speed light and do a shot of, uh, you know, Sally Sue near the beach, do you need that? No. It would certainly be very helpful, at least a color checker passport, so you could actually not guess at the white balance. You know what? Multiple, you know, there, there's a reason why there's a white balance setting on all your cameras. Fluorescent, there's all sorts of stuff that bleeds into a shot. Now, if you have complete control over complete control over the lighting, that's not an issue. You usually don't, especially in someone else's house. You know, they've got the lights on. You pop on a studio strobe. Usually, some sort of fluorescent or who knows what sort of lighting. Maybe it's pouring through the window. Um, you could black out everything and wait till night. That's not practical. You have to roll with what you're given. And why even think about it? Just have someone. I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a test shot. Boom, click. <clears throat> Go into Lightroom later. White balance is right down here. I should have placed the card like this. White balance is right down there. I could actually add warming tones or cooling tones simply by using these as my white balance points. Why even think about that stuff? Why Why are you pissing? Not only are you pissing the client off, you're pissing time away. This is you think this silly little thing will save you so much time. It's unbelievable. You know what? No professional photographer on earth can do even with the histogram on their camera, is uh, calculate lighting ratios. Layered lighting. You know, was, well, you know, I could look at the histogram on my camera. That's not only not your raw file you're not looking at, which you should be shooting raw anyway, you're looking at an embedded JPEG in your raw file. That's not the actual raw file itself. And you're only guessing, well, sure, I could look at my histogram. That actually tells me something. No, it, it doesn't tell you that. And, uh, <laughs> can anybody meter, any camera out there meter for uh, any sort of a speed light or strobe light? None of them can. I don't care what camera you got. Your goddamn camera can't meter strobe or speed light illumination. You know what else it can't do? It actually can't tell you lighting ratios. Like you got layered lighting, main light, fill light, background light. <sighs> if you taught yourself how to use a really simple light meter. It doesn't have to be a really expensive one like this, like the 758 DRU from Sekonic. I think currently what this is, 600 and 600 quarter. 
Could be a 650 now. It also has a built in spot meter. If you're going to be doing portraiture, I'm not talking about candid portraiture at a wedding. Um, however, that's useful for that too. I mean, if you have any skills at all, I mean, it eliminates a, ma a tremendous amount of time. You show up to someone's house and you're not only going to piss your time away, you know, guessing what the white balance is at night in Lightroom. Why? N nobody's paying you to piss your time away. No client is going to, you can't bill your client for three hours of Lightroom guessing as opposed to one hour. It doesn't work that way. Maybe you could. They never, they never hire you again. They'd never recommend you. You're supposed to be a professional. You just can't show up with a professional gear. You have to eliminate all the variables instantly, and that means learning how to use this and learning how to use a light meter, which I've never seen any of the top 20. And by top, I mean top only in uh, subscriber and you know, lip service. I've never seen any of them use a light meter. It's an absolute necessity. If someone were doing a bunch of studio work or uh, product photography or on location portraiture, especially trying to calculate lighting ratios, it's not that complicated. It eliminates all the guesswork. Not only during the shoot for exposure and dynamic range and white balance, but af at home on your computer. What the hell are these people thinking? You know, if you're just an. Uh, beginner or uh, intermediate shooter that's not necessary I'm not saying you know oh, if you enjoy photography and you know it's your pastime and hobby you know I'm not trying because you know suck the fun out of something that makes you happy I'm not trying to suck the fun out of anything that makes anybody happy if you're gonna start making money out of it though you know time is money and uh, pissing your time away guessing absolute repeatable consistency you have to be exactly like a professional athlete or swimmer and there's no debating it there is nobody that's going to debate this video if you're going to debate it then uh, you know you're going to be debating it from the perspective of someone that's just enjoying it as a hobby if you're doing uh, advanced uh, photography and uh, you're getting paid or you're doing it full time it's a difference between a professional photographer just getting paid and an actual expert photographer that actually knows how to control lighting uh, supposedly both of them uh, need to know how to uh, correctly white balance out the uh, shots that they're doing. However, most of them don't. They're chimping off the back of their camera. Your client's going to look at you like you're an asshole. Not only that, if it's a high-end client, they have a limited time. They're not going to put up with you uh, dicking around, checking out, and chimping on the back of your camera. You know, you can calibrate this to your camera and calculate it out. I'll make two adjustments at max. All I need to do is look at the uh, LCD screen once. Everything else, I just concentrate on you know the composition of the shot. I don't have to worry about white balance. I don't have to worry about dynamic range. I, all of that's conquered. All the variables, which are really important. I'm pretty sure that white balance is important, and I'm pretty sure that dynamic range is important. And I'm pretty sure that pissing away time, eliminating as much time uh, as possible at night you just pop your card in uh, you set your white balance across the board apply to all why why don't people talk about this I don't hear anybody talking about this there are a few people a few obscure people out there making videos talking about this I mean very few why is nobody talking about it if it's your hobby obviously you're not concerned about it but I'm not talking to those people doesn't make any sense. It's illogical and stupid. This will save you a ton of time and pay for itself instantly. Everybody that bought this thing off my recommendation and knows how to use it says, you're right, save so much time, white balance, boom, right there. I don't have to guess about it anymore. Same thing with a light meter. You train yourself how to use one. This is not throwback technology. This is as applicable now as it ever was. Your camera has a set dynamic range. You can push it to the max, ETTR, exposed to the right. I don't care how good of a photographer you are. There's no good, there's the best photographers in the world out there that are doing product and commercial and portraiture, professional portraiture, are using a light meter for a reason. It lets you very, very, very quickly calculate lighting ratios and determine your percentages of where you want them to fall. Okay, 70% here. 30% of my hair light and 20% for effect on background, for example. 
That's rocking three lights. No photographer on earth, no matter how good they are, does that stuff in their head. They don't. You can sit there and you could dick around. It's like, okay, I've set my main light. Okay. And I'm going to keep chimping. I mean, if you do that with someone watching you, they're like, this guy's not a professional. He's a dumbass. And that's a fact. And nobody's going to deny that. So, if you're going to start making money at it, or if you want to get serious, then get a color checker passport. If you want to get really serious and you start doing portraiture, commercial product photography, get a light meter. I'm not recommending a light meter for someone that's just out doing hobbyist work. Obviously not. Um, they're not that expensive, and they pay for themselves. And, you know, I'm not saying hang this around your neck to look like a professional. I'm saying hang this around your neck. Learn the hell how to use it. Okay? So you're not guessing at what the hell it is you're doing. Got this calibrated right now. Channel 1, 2, 3. Channel 1 is Nikon D500. Channel 2 is Fuji X-T2. Channel 3 is Nikon D810 for specific calibration. Drop it up there. Instant metering. Boom. F11. Eighth of a second. Right now I'm actually set for T1. I'm going to go into mode. I'm going to go into aperture priority. I can set flash. Flash count. Wireless. There's actually a radio transmitter in here that will actually do a wirelessly trip my speed lights from my studio strobes. So I can go directly up to my subject. The radio transmitter back here drops it to my strobe or to my speed light. Boom. Instantly check that. Check my speculars. Check my midtones. Check my shadows. Check my hair light. Check my background. There is no goddamn guesswork, and there's no sitting there going back and forth chimping on your goddamn camera. It doesn't take that long. There's not that many buttons on this thing. This thing is less complicated than your camera is. You know? When you buy a new camera, didn't you read the manual? Well, all you have to do is read the manual on this thing. You know, well, you have to read every manual like a few times to get used to it. But, I mean, once you got this conquered, it applies to every goddamn camera you're ever going to have or will have or ever have had. So, you know? It goes with every camera. No, I'm not. I have a sponsorship with Sekonic. No, Sekonic isn't giving me anything. Just think about absolute repeatable consistency so you can focus on the shot instead of like, well, you know, I'm going to chimp on this. I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. And you sit here at night. You're sitting here like an ape scratching your head. What's the correct white balance? <laughs> That's what people do when they take a bunch of shots. <coughs> I've seen them do it. They'll take a shoot of, like, some hot chick on the beach, and then they'll take, like, another 100 shots underneath the canopy or something, and the lighting is changing, the shading is changing. And every time they change uh, composition of the shot and they move the model somewhere else or in different lighting conditions, they're sitting there like a chimp guessing on what the correct white balance. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm right, because I am right. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, drop a buck or two. Tell me you jump off a cliff. Just remember absolute repeatable consistency. Ark! Ark. Kind of like Noah's Ark. Right? Except with a C. Thanks. Bye.